Hello. So this is a quick tutorial on how to use ARMA Debug Engine to debug SQL scripts. So we start at the ARMA mods that you have to download. So the first one is ARMA Debug Engine. You can find that one on my workshop. It's also linked in the description, I hope. Um, that one requires intercept minimal dev, also on my workshop. So you also want to subscribe to that. Steam, please. And it's intercept manual dev also requires CVA, which we probably already have, but you can also install it here. So that's all the armor mods we need. Next up, we need the Visual Studio code extensions. So for that, we will open that here. Go to extensions and just search for SQF. And here we'll find the SQF debugger by Bill W, and we want to install that one. It also already has some guide and information here that you can could probably read too. And that's all the setup for mods so far. So we'll just make a quick test mod. I already prepared one here. I just made a very simple mod with basic CFG patches, patches and CFG functions. Just some test function that I have in this folder here. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, the important thing for mod setup is that you need to have some PBO prefix. So in this case, I'm packing with Mikero, so I uh, put my PBO prefix down in this style. You can use whatever your tool that you're packing with does. Uh, all that matters is that there's a PBO prefix. In this case, I just put here test mode. Doesn't really matter whatever you use. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be CVA or ACE or whatever style of mod. It just can be any PBO prefix. Uh, Actually, it might even be no PBO prefix, because if you don't specify one, the default one will be the name of your PBO, but I really don't recommend doing that, so please just make some PBO prefix, your mod will most likely already have one. So now we have our mod, we will just pack that one and put it into our armor by just placing it in our address directory like everyone to tells you you should never do. And I assume everyone who's watching this also knows that you should never do it and why, so please don't do it. Uh, so next up we can already start armor, armor launcher. So here we want to enable the correct mods we need, with, which is armor debug engine. And if we click that here, armor launcher will already tell us we require CB and intercept. So we will also enable both of these and just launch armor. One thing we will notice here is this error message. It's not actually an error, it's just a warning that some parts of Armor Debug Engine are not working because I'm too lazy to fix them. Uh, they are not breaking anything be besides the end mouse, uh, mouse effect. As you can see, a mouse might be, might be stuck in game and has to be freed by opening Task Manager via Control Alt Delete. You will probably see that later while we're testing. Uh, but as long as it's only these four, there's nothing major broken and it will work. Uh, yes. So next up, another error message because I'm too lazy to fix it. It doesn't mean anything. It's fine. Actually, this has to be here. So yeah. So that's basically all the armor setup already done. I'll just start into VR quick. Place some units so that we can test. So uh, next step is so we'll set up uh, Visual Studio Code to connect to armor. So for that we go back to Visual Studio Code and we will open our project. Uh, to make this a bit more visual, I will take my project and move it to the desktop. You will see in a second. So we want to go to uh, File, Open Folder. Now we get to our folder and open it. So now we have our project open here inside Visual Studio Code. Next step is we need to set up the connection between Visual Studio Code and Armor. For that we go to Run and Debug on the left here. And we want to create a launch.json file by just clicking on here. And here in the uh, environment we just select SQF Debugger. Not SQF Lint Debugger if you have that installed too. That's a older version of the debugger that doesn't work as well. So we just want just SQF Debugger. So uh, the important thing to set up here is the mission root and script prefix. These two uh, specify the relationship between the folder that you have on your computer and the folder that Armor internally has. 
So in this example, uh, mission root is uh, works, uh, workspace folder here is just a macro for the current folder you have open. So workspace folder is equivalent to this path, the folder that I have open. Script prefix is uh, the in-game path. So in this case, our prefix is just test mod. So we put just test mod in here. Uh, what this does is um, it correlates the uh, script file. So if you have a script file inside mission root test.sqf inside Visual Studio Code, then it will uh, be equivalent to script prefix slash test.sqf inside armor. So in our case, we have my desktop folder here. We have fn test function in this path. But inside armor, the path will be test mode back to that fn test function because that's our PBO prefix and the file. So that's just the path inside armor. If you are modding, you should know how that works, and I assume you will know. So we just set up this relationship here and we save that. Now we can just click here on connect. And it should say connected. If it doesn't, then the armor mode is probably not loaded. But in our case, it is. So when we can start debugging, we will just set a waypoint over here and go to in game and just trigger our script by just spawning the function. It, it can be scheduled or unscheduled, it doesn't matter. So we just spawn our function here. And now, one problem you probably want a second screen because what I can see, but you can see now, is that my Visual Studio Code icon is blinking but it didn't automatically switch over to it. So we just have to all tap over it and then we can see it. So you probably have to do that manually. We will also see the other um, mouse issue later on. I'll show you that. So now we are in Visual Studio Code and we can use the buttons on the top right to just step through our code line by line. And on the left, we can see all the local variables here. Um, mission namespace also works, but uh, well, it does work, but there's a lot of stuff in there, so yeah, oh. stuff. Um, one thing to also note is here, if you hover your mouse cursor over player, we can see the content of the variable, but if we hover over the other player, we can't. That is because inside the debugger, every variable name is lowercase only, and Visual Studio Code doesn't understand that. That's probably fixable in the extension, but I don't know how to fix it. So I won't fix that. But Visual Studio Code is basically looking for uppercase player, but there's only a local lowercase player, so the mouse hover will often not work if you have any uppercase letters and variable names. But it's always visible on the left here. So now we are on the sleep. If we step over this one, nothing happens because the script is sleeping. And because, as you can see, I'm on the background, it's in the pause screen, uh, and this is not a UI sleep, uh, the time is not running. So we have to get the time to run somehow before we can continue. So I'll just go in-game, go out and wait. Again, second screen is very useful or you could uh, use armor and windowed because right now my armor is frozen. I can shoot and I can see the blinking icon on my second screen but I can't switch over to it. So I will just alt tap again. And so, okay, so this time my mouse works. If you all tap over and your mouse doesn't work, so you can see your cursor, it's probably still stuck inside armor and armor didn't let go. Uh, so the fix for that is to just press Control Alt Delete, uh, select Task Manager, and when you do that, you have your mouse cursor back. So you can just close the Task Manager again and all is fine. So we are back in our script now. We can see the pl player, everything is as before. We can now step over this and then we can see the damage variable too. We have if statement, we want to step into that. We are now inside the, the if statement, player set damage. Oh, as you can see in the background, my heart disappeared. My player is probably dead, but we don't see the effect yet because the game is paused inside the debugger. So we can also step over that. And because we usually reach the end of the function, the step over ended with debugging. And again, it's just running again. And so if we go in game, we are now dead and we see the system chat in our 
chat. And that's already basically everything you need to, need to know for debugging mods. For debugging missions, it's a bit more complicated and I will show you that too. Okay, so I have set up here a mission that we want to test. I have saved it as debug test mission. If we go to the mission directory, you can see here I put some test SQL scripts inside it that we want to debug later. So we can open this mission also in Visual Studio Code. Open folder. Open my mission. Let's set to my mission. So here we have it. Um, here again, we want to create our launch station file and create this connection. The problem here is we don't usually know the in-game script path of our mission because it doesn't usually have a PBO prefix. So to just find out that path, we'll just go inside armor and find out. So we launch the mission and we'll just use the mission path. Get mission path. So we will ask get mission path what is the path to our mission SQM. Here we will ask it and we will see here that's our full path. So we can just take that and copy it and plug that in right here. Fix the backslashes because Visual Studio Code wants double backslash. And we want the directory of our mission. So in that case that's just this part. So we get rid of the end. And now we have our script prefix. This path is different for when you are playing in single player in editor or multiplayer in editor or multiplayer remote. So this path will change depending on how and where you play the mission. But using this simple trick you can always easily get the path in game. But it's it's a bit more set up to do for missions. But it's really simple to do. So we have our launch JSON and we can now connect again and set us some breakpoints in our scripts. So I will set one here and set one here. And then we can just execute the our script file, I think this one. Yes, so execute VM. And here we are. So I already manually, manually all tapped over now. You can also see this script here as the path to the script. Once again. Oh. And again, as usual, we can now step through in mission scripts, see our local variables. We can also step into. And here we are in our sub function. Um, one thing also, when you are in sub functions that are called by other functions, you can see the call stack on the bottom left here. So we can see here we are in test2.sqf on line 4. And if you click on that, we will see our parent function and where that one has called us. And that goes all the way up. Um, the call stack ends when you do a when you, when you do a spawn exec VM because that creates a new script. So that will the start of the stack will either be a event handler pre-init or something, or something that was spawned or exec VM'd. So yeah. So we can again step through this code and our player will be dead again. And that's also it for mission debugging and now you have everything you need to know.